today, saints. I'm so excited to be back with you. I trust that you're ready for an awesome, awesome time as we now get into the next session of the book of Revelation. We're dealing with session number 21, and everybody's ready. Everybody's waiting for Jesus to open the scroll and to break that first seal, and let's go and see what's happening, and the tribulation starts, but you're going to have to wait one more week. All right, what I want to do in this session is I want to deal with the issue of Daniel 70 weeks. Okay, now we're going to deal with the, the seven-year tribulation, right? Once Jesus opens that first seal, it begins the seven-year tribulation. But we need to understand why is it so significant and why... Is there a tribulation? Why does it need to be the seven-year period and three and a half years of intense trouble? Okay, why is it? What is this all about? So I'm going to trust and help to show you and indicate and give you some reasons publicly as to what this is about and why Jesus Christ has allowed this. Remember, Jesus Christ is now going to carry out all the authority and the judgment and stuff is really going to start coming from Jesus and the Father. And every time, and I want you to see, they're going to come in sevens, right? Every time you get the next seven, it's going to be tougher than the first seven. So it starts tough, then it gets tougher, and then it gets toughest, and then it gets radically bad. So we're going to show you, we're going to take you through the process, but you are going to see what God has in store for the nation of Israel. So I want us quickly to have a look at the 70 weeks. And so I want you to have a look at the diagram that we're going to put up right now. All right. Now, there is a, there is a, um, a structure that's going to happen, and you're going to find this repeated many times in the book of Revelation. It happens whenever you get a seven. And I just want you to take note of this. And we'll put it into a diagram form for you. But it is the following. When you've got seven, it runs six of the seven will run straight off each other. But between six and seven, there's always a gap. Between number six and seven, there's always a gap. And I don't have a clue why God did it like this. But you'll see it in every one of the sevens as we go through. Sometimes it's just a small one, even if it's one verse, it has this gap. It breaks the thought, changes the subject, and then comes back. And so I want us to see that this is something that is constant, and it's going to happen right through with the trumpets, with the woes, with, uh, with everything that we do. Okay? In the book of Revelation, you'll see that this system works. Now, this even works with the 70 weeks of Daniel. All right? Now, what has happened is, just look at the diagram that we've got on screen. 69 of these weeks have already happened before Jesus Christ came. Then you have a break in the time when Jesus Christ was on the earth and he was crucified and the temple was destroyed. And this period is known as the time of the Gentiles. And then you've got one week that comes after this. And that is the 70th week. All right, it is the seven years that we call the tribulation. Now, the actual word tribulation should actually just be kept for the last three and a half years, but everybody just says the seven years is tribulation, and the last three and a half is the great tribulation. Okay? But let's just keep it at that for now so people can understand. But I want to show you out of Daniel chapter 9 what this is all about. So the 69 weeks deals with verse 25. The time of the Gentiles deals with verse 26. And the week, the 70th week, deals with verse 27 of Daniel chapter 9. And one of the things I just want to make a statement with is verse 27 also reinforces the covenant. 
Okay, so those seven years is about reinforcing the covenant. Now, what I want us to do is the following. I want us to go to Daniel quickly. And I want us to have a look at Daniel 20, chapter, 20, uh, chapter 9, verse 25, 26, 27. And we are going to go through this so that you understand this. Because I think that many people hear about the 70th week of Daniel and we don't have an idea what this is about. Basically what it's saying is this. The 70th week of Daniel is literally the seven years of tribulation. That's the only thing that was missing out of this prophecy. So let's go look at verse 25. All right, this deals with the six days, uh, uh, 69 out of the 70 weeks, okay? And it says this, verse 25. Know therefore and understand... That from the going forth of the command to restore and build Jerusalem until Messiah, says until the Messiah comes, the prince, there shall be seven weeks and sixty-two weeks, the street shall be built again and the wall even in the troublesome times. Now what has happened in that time? Remember where Daniel was? He was in Babylon. They were in captivity. And he says, from then until the Messiah is going to be 69 weeks. So there's going to be 69 weeks if you add that up. And they are going to rebuild Jerusalem. Remember, Nehemiah came out and they built it. And so they rebuilt Jerusalem, rebuilt the walls. And so that period to the date was 100% correct. Okay, fit it in right up to when Messiah was born. And so, Jesus Christ comes on the earth. And so the 69 weeks of Daniel have been completed. And I don't want to spend too much time on the 69, but I just wanted you to see that it's been done. When Jesus Christ came on the scene, it ended those 69 weeks. Now Jesus Christ comes. And so listen very carefully to this. And after the 62 weeks, Messiah shall be cut off. But not for himself. And the people of the prince who is to come shall destroy the city and sanctuary. And end of it shall be with a flood. Until the end of the war of desolation. Desolations are determined. What does that mean? What's going on now? It means from the time when Jesus Christ came, there is going to be what we call the time of the Gentiles. This is the, this is the, uh, the gap that I'm talking about. Okay, between number six and seven. This is the gap. And it says that in this time, there is going to be a destruction again. And it's going to be an absolute mess. The city is going to be destroyed again. AD 70 after Christ. The city was once again destroyed. And so it's going to be destroyed. So Jesus Christ comes. Jesus Christ gets stopped. In other words he was killed. Then the city gets destroyed. And then there's a time... And what's interesting about this time frame is the following. This is the time of the Gentiles. This is the time that we are currently in. Right? We are in the gap between the 69 weeks and the 70th week. So I want you to see something here. It says, the end of it shall be with a flood. Now many theologians believe... That at the time of the beginning of the tribulation, there's going to be a flood. Not like Moses. Okay, but there's going to be a flood. Something is going to come on this earth, and it's going to physically come, and there's going to be floods. It's going to be well documented, well known, 
abnormal flood that's going to hit the earth. But not like, not like uh, with Noah. Sorry. And it says, so there's going to be a flood until the end of the war, desolations are determined. So in other words, there's going to be a major war as well. So if you want to find out when the tribulation is roughly going to begin, look out for some wars and flooding. But I want to tell you right now that we are living in the last of the last of the last of the last days of the Gentile season. Every single thing that we are seeing now is a prelude to what's coming. It's all getting ready. Many people have said to me, this COVID situation, this controlling the population, this vaccination, all of these things, is this part of the mark of the beast, the 666? No, it's not. All right? The mark of the beast will be given by the beast himself. The beast has not given it. The Antichrist has not appeared. I want to say something very um, outright and very strong. You as the church of Jesus Christ will not see the Antichrist. Okay, so I want you to see that you will not see the Antichrist. You will not be here. He might be hidden. He's obviously preparing. Okay, because it's going to be some time for him to be able to get everything done. So I'm not saying that he's not alive. I believe he is and he's preparing and he's getting ready. But this is not his season. As long as the church of Jesus Christ is here, it is not a season. And so I want you to understand that this time of Gentiles is important for us as believers because this is where we need to get as many people born again as possible. We need to sit down and look for Jesus Christ's return at any given time. I want to tell you right now, as the prophecies are coming through so fast, we literally see it happening in the world. And so this is really important that you need to know that you are part of this. Okay, so now let's go to verse 27. Now this is the tribulation. This is the 70th week. And from next week, we are going to start delving into this thing flat out. Alright? Verse 27. Then he shall confirm a covenant. This is speaking about the Antichrist. He's going to come and bring peace. He's going to bring a covenant of peace. He shall confirm a covenant with many for one week. Right? That's seven years. But in the middle of the week, that's three and a half years, he shall bring an end to sacrifice and offering. In other words, he's going to go into the temple and he's going to stop everything that was a traditional ritual that the Jewish people will be following. He's going to put an end to it. That means two things. Number one, there has to be a temple. Right? If you see the temple going up, the third temple, you better pack your bags and stand outside and say, God, I'm ready to leave. Because then you must know that it's very, very close. Okay, but in the middle of the week, he shall bring an end to sacrifice and offering. And on the wing of abominations shall be one who makes desolate. Even until the consummation, which is determined, is poured out on the desolate. What does that mean? It means that he's going to make a covenant for the seven year period of peace, but halfway through he turns on the Jews. He comes into the temple, he desecrates it. Okay, and we'll deal with that when we get there. But this is the prophecy that Daniel saw. He saw this time frame and he says that there is desolation everywhere. Listen, it is one nightmare after the next that's going to come onto this earth in this time of tribulation. But I'm telling you right now, Jesus Christ is behind it. And God the Father is behind it. 
This tribulation was never meant for believers. It is allowing the evil forces to have their way on this earth. And we're going to get to that reason in a few minutes. So what I want you to see is the following. Is that from, uh, from Revelation chapter 6. Right from chapter 6 till chapter 19. It is going to cover that seven period time. It's going to cover the seven years that we call the tribulation, the last three and a half, the great tribulation. Now I want you just to look at this on the screen quickly. Right, so just have a look, we just put it into form quickly. Chapter 6 to chapter 19 covers that. That time is known as the seven, uh, 70th week of Daniel. If you, have, if you ever hear it, you now understand what that is about. The 70th week of, of, um, of uh, Daniel covers that time frame. But three and a half years, the second half, three and a half years is called the Great Tribulation. Also known as Jacob's Sorrow. These are just different terms for that time frame. So I want you to get ready so that now next week when we go into day one of the tribulation, you understand when we use the terms, then you understand that this is now the 70th week of Daniel. When we get into the second half, you'll understand the great tribulation, Abraham's, uh, uh, Jacob's sorrows. See, these are the terms given for these time frames, and I trust that this is now clear on the screen for you. But here comes the big question that I want to handle today. Why do we need the tribulation in the first place? What is so significant about this tribulation? Why do we need it? Daniel gives us six reasons why. And I want to deal with those six reasons. Why does the tribulation need to happen? I want us to go to Daniel chapter 9, verse 24. And I want you to read the scripture. Now I want you to, to understand something. The tribulation is only geared for Israel. The rest of the world is going to suffer. But the focus is not the rest of the world. It is Israel. It's not the church. Why? Because we're sitting in heaven. We're not part of this. And I'm going to show you six reasons why. Daniel chapter 9 verse 24. Seventy weeks are determined for your people and for your holy city. Right? For your people and for Jerusalem. Here we go. To finish the transgression. To make an end of sins. To make a reconciliation for iniquity. To bring in everlasting righteousness. To seal up vision and prophecy. And to anoint the most holy. These are the six reasons for the tribulation that the 70 weeks after now I've got to get kicked in. So let's go through them step by step and understand what, what Daniel was trying to say by this. Because we need to understand, when we go into the seven years of tribulation, you must know, God the Father and the Son are busy releasing wrath on this earth. And that wrath is for a purpose. And I'm going to show you what this is all about. Number one, you have to go through the tribulation for the following. Remember, Israel. Israel gets saved because of the tribulation. When I say saved, born again. They accept the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. Romans chapter 11 says this. Verse 26 to 27. It says, And so all Israel will be saved as it is written. The deliverer will come out of Zion and he will turn away ungodliness from Jacob. He will turn away any ungodliness that has come through the bloodline through, from Jacob. 
For this is my covenant with them when I take away their sins. So I want you to see that Jesus starts putting pressure on Israel so that they will actually turn to him. They will turn to Jesus Christ. Now you're going to see as we get into this, they don't initially turn to him. Alright, when the pressure gets on, they don't turn to him. But by the time they get to the end, they are going to turn to him. And so the reason for the tribulation is basically to get Israel to get born again. Because they're not listening any other way. Number two. It is to make an end of sins. You know, Satan gets sealed up. This tribulation brings a point where Satan is actually bound up for a little bit. Revelation chapter 21 to 3. It says, Then I saw an angel coming down from heaven, having the key to the bottomless pit, and a great chain in his hand. He laid hold of the dragon, that old serpent of old, who is the devil and Satan, bound him for a thousand years. And he cast him into the bottom of the pit and shut him up and set a seal on him so that he should deceive the nations no more till a thousand years were finished. But after these things, he must be released just for a little while. And so the tribulation comes and brings about an end of major sin. For a thousand years, Satan is bound up, the father of lies, the father of sin, the deceptive one. Everything comes to a halt. Because God is busy with something significant. Number three. To make reconciliation for iniquity. In other words, the sin of your father's 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 has brought you to a place that there's no reconciliation. There has to be reconciliation. And the only way that that happens is when Israel accepts Jesus Christ. Let's go and look at the prophecies over Israel about getting born again. Ze uh, Zechariah 12.10 says, I will pour on the house of David... And on the inhabitants of Jerusalem, the spirit of grace and supplication. And then they will look on me, whom they have pierced. They will mourn for him as one mourns for his only son, and grieve for him as one grieves for a firstborn. What is the saying? They are going to get desperate. They are going to recognize that they had killed the Messiah. And they are going to start crying out before God for what they have done. Zechariah 13.1 In that day a fountain shall be opened for the house of David and for the inhabitants of Jerusalem. For sin and uncleanness. God is going to wash away all the sin. That the fathers have done. Fathers upon fathers and upon fathers. Because Israel as a nation is going to accept the Lord Jesus Christ. As their personal Lord and Savior. Isaiah 66 verse 8. He has heard, sorry, who has heard such a thing? Who has seen such things? Shall the earth be made to give birth in one day? Or shall a nation be born at once? For as soon as Zion was in labor, she gave birth to a children. What does that mean? It means can a nation be born again in one day? Will the nation be born again in one day? Yes, Israel is going to get born again in one day. Why? Because all hell is going to break loose on them. And it's going to get tougher and tougher because they are stubborn. 
and it's going to get tougher and tougher until they turn to God, turn to the living God, the genuine Messiah who they've been waiting for all these years. And in one day, the nation is going to repent. The nation is going to repent and say, Jesus Christ, you are Lord. Number four. The tribulation is there to bring in everlasting righteousness. Once Israel accepts Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, then the kingdom of God can actually operate on this earth. Habakkuk 2.14 It says, For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of God as the waters cover the sea. Right now, if you had to go and ask, Many people do not accept the Lord Jesus Christ. They do not have the knowledge that Jesus Christ is alive. When I say the knowledge, not head knowledge, a genuine revelation in their hearts. The whole earth is going to be there. There's going to be a thousand years of peace where Jesus Christ actually reigns and rules. And there's going to be peace still on this earth. All right? Then the new heaven and the new earth is going to come. Number five. To seal up vision and prophecy. What does that mean? It means to stop it. It doesn't need. You don't need a vision. You don't need a prophecy. If you've got the real standing in front of you. If I have Janine in front of me. My wife. If I've got in front of me. I don't need a vision of her. I can see her. And so the tribulation is here to seal it up, close it all down. There won't be any need for vision. There won't be need for prophecy anymore. Because Jesus Christ is there. They are going to see him. They're going to recognize him. And they're going to follow him. And number six, which is going to be an exciting one. To anoint the most holy. All right. This is about... Anointing the most holy place in the millennium. Go and read in Ezekiel chapter 41. I don't have time to go through the whole chapter with you right now. But Ezekiel 41 discusses this whole idea of the millennial kingdom. With the new temple. And this is where you're going to come and anoint. The holy site. The equipment. Everything. Everything. Because the most holy will be in place. Remember that in the tribulation it's all messed up. The Antichrist has gone into the temple, tessellated it, made it a mess, mockery. So everything has to be redone. Re-anointed, re-sanctified, set aside again, start again. And so this, according to Daniel, is the six main reasons for the tribulation. Now I want to give you a summary quickly. Let's go to Matthew chapter 23, verse 37 to 39. This is Jesus speaking, and he describes why this has to happen, and what's going to happen. Listen to what he says, verse 37. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem! The one who kills the prophets and stones the ones that are sent to you. Okay, I want to just ask, stop right there quickly. Come on, how many times has God tried to tell Israel to come right? You go look through the history. One good king, one bad king. One good king, one bad king. One good king, one bad king. They just never got this thing sorted. Why? Because they never accepted the Lord Jesus Christ. And so Jesus says to them, you've stoned everybody who I've sent you. How often I want to gather you as children together as a hen gathers her chicks under the wings. But you were not willing. See, your house is left to you desolate. Your house is left to you desolate. It is now messed up. 
For I say to you, you shall see me no more until you say, speaking to Israel, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Jesus Christ says, you're not going to see me until you accept me as your personal Lord and Savior. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. So, how do I summarize the tribulation? Very simple. The tribulation is there to put Israel into a corner and to pressurize them and to make it unbearable for them until they realize that Jesus Christ is Lord of Lords and King of Kings. The purpose of the tribulation was to get Israel to genuinely repent. So that when Jesus Christ comes back and he lands on that Mount of Olives and he comes on that white horse and he comes as the defender, every single tongue, every single individual, every Jewish person will accept him as their personal Lord and Savior in Jesus' name. But I want to make one thing very clear. You and I are not here. The tribulation was never designed, never intended, and never was created for you and I who are born again. So I want to close with this. Don't be afraid of the tribulation. When we start going into what happens on this earth, I want you to know you're going to be safe, you're going to be secure, you're going to be celebrating in fact. Because you're going to be together with Jesus Christ. And I don't want anybody to fear. Alright? Some of the things we're going to get into become quite horrific. Some of the things are really bad. But it's not for you and I. But I thought that it would be a very good thing for you to get an indication of what this is all about. That you understand what the 70th week was about and why the tribulation is necessary. So let's pray together. Lord, we thank you for this time. I pray, Lord, that you're going to move by your spirit in our lives. Lord, I thank you that while we are on this earth, we will pray for Jerusalem. We will pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We will pray for Israel. And Lord, I thank you that you are going to draw the Jewish nation closer to you in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. All right, folks. Next week is what you've been waiting for. We start opening the seals. As you can see behind me, these are the four horsemen. We are going to start opening those seals. We are going to look at the judgments that Jesus Christ starts putting down on the earth to get Israel to repent. And that is the primary focus. That's the reason why tribulation exists. Okay? So that Israel will come to repentance. But I want you to get ready. Next week's going to be awesome. It's going to be exciting. It's going to be amazing. And to think that we're sitting with the Lamb's Feast. We're celebrating the marriage feast with the Lamb. So God bless you. Have a wonderful week. And we'll see you next time. Amen.